Um, do we have a assistant chair for the day? Does anyone want to volunteer, Alex or Margaret? Sure. All right, well, we are calling the uh, RFC design review to order. We do not have quorum, uh, just two commission members. Uh, so we'll begin and we'll only be offering uh, feedback. To and vote. today is December 2nd of 2021, just in case that doesn't get articulated. So our first uh, item for review is 4617 Lorraine Avenue. And this is a uh, facade renovation. I believe we already heard this once, but they're back again, so. So uh, uh, Eugene was asked to provide evidence that there were two doors, um, two separate entrances into the building. Uh, so he did some, uh, we, we did find a photo, but unfortunately there's a big milk truck in front of one and a sign over the top of the transom. So it didn't, it just showed the one entrance, but you could imply the fact that there were two signs that there were two entrances, but he did find original build cards at the Historic Society that showed um, when they actually covered up one door and turned it into one unit inside uh, at the front. And then, uh, and let's see what, I can't remember the dates now on those cards. I think there should be in some of the stuff that he had sent to you. I believe it was the late thirties when they put it back to two units. And then, um, Nate, I don't know if you saw it, but um, in the file folder, I added a document from Carl. It's um, something from the storefront renovation where they're not going through the program anymore, but they started with the program and there is a rendering there from SRP that could help inform some comments potentially. So I think it'd be helpful to also show that if that's okay with the applicants. Sure, I can. Um, do you want me to pull that up now? Maybe. Uh, that, that was to the applicant. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, okay, great. This is Carl. I'll note that the storefront bounced between one and two storefronts multiple times, I think, from what I was able to find. Um, because in the 50s, it was a single storefront. Mm -hmm. And then it may have been opened up again in the 60s and then closed again afterwards so it's really difficult on this timeline but there are multiple permits for the storefront but no earlier photographs than what was already found right and in in this photo in speaking with um dan musson who did this there are some differences much thinner um divisions uh, there are extra divisions on the top as well and what was i think this would have been more appropriate i don't remember what the exact measurements were but um but you can see uh, especially in the transom area there were more divisions up there than what was installed so i mean i think the problem we have here is that if given a, a fresh look at this we may have recommended some tweaks to this. I don't think the commission members would have a problem with it being one or two storefronts, as Carl mentioned, it oscillated between them throughout history, uh, but rather the detailing of the renovation and the loss of the, the woodwork, regardless of the date of that woodwork, it likely went back uh, to a period that would be considered historic. Um, and, and you did initially start out doing the right thing by working through the storefront renovation program. So that demonstrates that you had knowledge of the process um, and ability or willingness to comply with it. And then at some point um, you went rogue for lack of a better term and installed this, which again, we may have had some refinements to. And so I find myself and I, and I won't speak for my other committee member, I'm sort of in a bind here because we are getting an increasing number of requests for forgiveness and not permission. And over time, that will denigrate the, the integrity of the historic district and our role here, um, both at Design Review and Landworks. So 
I don't know where it went off the rails and what happened, but I'm not sure what exactly we should do with this. And I'm not, we can't take a vote here, but if we did, I, I don't believe I would be voting in support of it because of that. What recommendations would you make to change from what was installed to, I think well, that, I'd I think want, that's- I'd, Yeah, I'd want to study closer, the, like you said, Carl, the, the thickness of uh, the dividers in the, the transom there. Um, I know more details uh, about those dividers. Um, like you said, they may have been more appropriate to be thicker. I'm not sure of the number of lights there, if that was appropriate. I'd, I'd want to study it more uh, and come up with a more, or, or actually what I probably would have done is not allowed the removal of the woodwork, uh, but required it to be restored, most likely. Margaret, I don't know if you have thoughts there. Yeah, I don't believe I saw this previously. So this is the first time that I am seeing this project. And um, just at, at the first glance, historically, I do not believe that there would have been that many lights in the transom and the, the width of those dividers um, doesn't ring as necessarily historic. Um, so I would make a recommendation for further study to, to look at if we, since there aren't very clear historic images of this, you know, other properties that we do have that reference for that are in the neighborhood built at the same, you know, similar time, similar style and, and do a further study on something that would probably be more appropriate looking, less divided lights, thicker, trim. Agreed. Donna, do you want to scroll back to or wherever the uh, current existing photos are? <laughs> there, yeah. Yeah, so there are, like you're saying, there are, there are less okay. lights at the transom. And then you added a little bit of detail to the actual storefront uh, system. I think one of the, the main concerns I have, you know, that the other storefront based on those build cards was probably added in the 60s, uh, 1962, it looks like, um, for the wood. And nothing, of course, was insulative. You know, it was just single pane glass, float glass stuck in uh, pieces of cord around. Um, so I would say, you know, whatever whatever he had done, uh, he put in at least an insulative storefront system, which is much better for the for the building envelope. Just as a comment. My gas bill did go down 70% after the windows were put in, <laughs> which is about $700 a month. So it was a big deal. There's a lot. Yeah, if that if that surplus sign wasn't there, you could be able to see the transom. It looks like, I mean, essentially since that surplus sign was there, I mean, when I bought the building back in 2000, um, I pulled this lower photo from uh, Google Street View and that's right around uh, 2007. So, I mean, the, the transom windows have basically been covered probably for the past 60, 70 years, if I had to take a, a guess. Is that one storefront still blocked by that enormous sign in the glass? Which one are you referring to? On the east side, can you scroll up please? Now, see the far one that's got the full glass filled with that sign? Yeah, that's uh, that that building is still there. That's the old roofing company. And those windows. No, no, I'm, no scroll up, please. That one, that there. sign right there, the ammo tech sign. Oh, yeah, that's they. So that's like a see through thing that they put on the inside of the glass. Mm. I don't think that was reviewed, and that's something. 
particularly with the phone number and such. I think there's some signage issues with that that may have to be addressed. I could I could definitely let them know about that. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. Well, since this is um, you know just recommendations and they, uh, the committee can't take a final vote, um, are, is there any other feedback that the committee would like to suggest? Um, should we also talk about the blade sign? I think it's a separate agenda item. So let's do the storefront okay. and then we can move to the agenda item. Um, I'm really torn here, but my recommendation to landmarks, again, without quorum, um, is that this installation uh, we would have requested change to. Margaret has identified, and, and Carl has identified some of the ways that we would have probably tweaked this. Um, if we would have allowed the removal of the wood altogether, I'm not sure that we would have. Um, and so I, I, cannot, I cannot support um, this request, this retroactive request. Okay, so then um, is that every comment you want to make for this particular, um, you know, case? Yeah, unless Margaret, unless you have anything else. Mm -mm. Okay. Okay. So then from what I understood, it'll go, it can still go to landmarks just with the rec recommendations. It won't be any type of, uh, you know, there's no vote taken. So. Correct. Okay. We can go to the second agenda item, which is the blade sign. So this is the same uh, address and it's for installation of a sign. So um, if you wanna start on this presentation. Perfect. Hi everybody, I'm Adele Winsuck and I'll be presenting for Be Next Design. And today we're proposing a new LED illuminated sign for Greek Village Grill. And the sign will be a double-sided projecting sign and the size will be four and a half feet by four and a half feet. It will have um, pan embossed painted faces. And I know that there were some questions as to the size of the windows of the unit that has been added on the rendering there right above the diagram of the sign. And Can you zoom in, Nate? The two lower windows are about 78 inches high by 54 wide. Hey, show, show the storefront there. Oh, okay. No, 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 up. Up, oh, top that, right. That one. Yeah, one, top right. Sorry, my computer lags very badly when I have to zoom in. Yeah, that will help. And then as you guys can see it from the bottom of the sign to the ground is 106 inches. And that's just showing the overall unit itself because I know there were uh, some requests to get those measurements. And uh, from the ground to the top of the sign, you're looking at 172 inches. And the electrical for the sign is going to be handled by others, but I do know that it will be concealed. And the square footage we're proposing today is 20.25 square feet. And this unit has a frontage of 20 feet. And I'd now like to open it up to any questions and or comments. Um, I noticed that it called for the lag bolts, but um, I didn't see where it specified um, mounting in the building. And so we do want it to specify that those mounts go through a mortar joint and okay. not through the brick. Yeah, we can definitely add that on there. And I'm having difficulty recalling our uh, prior signs that we've reviewed. Is this, this just seems, but I might be wrong, I might be mistaken, that this is larger than a typical blade sign at being 54, well, altogether 66 inches tall and 66 inches wide. That's, what does that come out to be? 
five and a half feet. It is a bit larger than your standard sign. Um, the customer did provide this size. He's wanting to maintain um, his signage because he's planning on opening multiple locations. So he wants everything to be uniform. He was the one who actually provided that size to us. And it actually works with the allowable amount of square footage uh, that this is allowed to have. But I do understand what you're saying that it is larger than your standard uh, sign. Yeah, I mean, we are in a, I think this part is a pedestrian retail overlay, uh, emphasizing the more pedestrian nature of the retail. I, I think that that's a bit larger than needs to be uh, on this building. And I'd like to see it a little bit smaller. All right. Margaret, I don't know if you agree with that. I, yeah, I, I definitely agree, right. especially being at that first story level. Yeah, it's just, it's too large for, it's only a two-story building, mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it's, it's, <laughs> the scale is off, is way off. So I, I think it needs to come down um, considerably, uh, but, but otherwise with that one change, um, I would be fine with it. All right, did you have a size in mind by chance? I'd have to go and look at what yeah, the other signs that go ahead, Margaret. Look at, I was gonna say the same thing. I'd have to look at um, some of the other blade signs that we- Carl, off the top of your head, do you have uh, dimensions that we typically approve? I don't, but you also have to remember that this also will be right at the front of the building and there's no building next to it. There's a parking lot, so it will have high visibility. So being smaller should not affect right. its um, effectiveness. And we can we can look for stuff and see what is typical. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I even think like a, a, a four in the four to five foot range is is probably more typical. Yeah, we just approved one last week or two weeks ago on I think on Church and State. I think it was. Um, it was much smaller and much more appropriate, and we approved that something along those size lines. Carl, maybe if you want to look there. Will do. Okay. All right. Well, with that recommendation, um, and the the mortar joint, the mortar joint, the... yep, mortar joints, and reduce the size. No problem. Okay. All right, Nate. We can move on to the third agenda item. Okay. So our third agenda item is twenty eight forty three Franklin Boulevard signage. Is the applicant here to speak on this? I believe I saw it. it's Aaron, right? Yes, I am. Hi, Aaron. Hi, everyone. How are you? Good. Good. Yeah, so my name is Aaron Caputo. I appreciate you guys um, taking the time here to, to review our application. <clears throat> We're here um, showing the sign outside of our building, the Sanford House, located at 2843 Franklin Boulevard. Um, I can give a little bit you know, more of a description on the sign, which is you know, right here. It's... Um, you know, it has the name of our of our two tenants on it. If you could scroll back up a little bit, Nate, I'll just read off here a little bit. It contains the name of our two tenants, the superlative group and locale. Um, it's a white face sign with blue text reading those two names. Um, and you know, I'll show photos here uh, of those um, of that that reading there. But so it's affixed between two Carlton false brick, uh, bold rouge dusted wide columns uh, with Carlton limestone caps. Um, those, you know, anchored by two wood beams that sit in a 36 inch concrete footer. Um, we have low voltage lightings on both sides. So, you know, when it gets dark, that you can still read the sign. Um, dimensions are 48 by 32 um, for the actual sign and the columns are 18 by 48 inches. So total dimensions are listed there below 85 inches uh, for the length, 48 for the height, 18 for the width and total area of uh, 4,080 square inches. Um, and then an additional note we just wanted to, to highlight for you guys is that, you know, Sanford House, you know, including the sign was awarded, um, you know, the dedication of preservation award by the Cleveland Restoration Society during the Restoration Society 2021 celebration of preservation awards. Um, so we can scroll down and can showcase what the sign looks like outside um, and then take any questions. Um, so that, that's where it sits on the property right there, right in front um, of our building, um, just off of uh, Franklin Circle, or Franklin Boulevard, I apologize. Um, yeah, if you scroll down, you can you know keep scrolling, I'll, I'll narrate as we go. Um, 
So that's the sign from uh, facing east, looking at our uh, at our sign there. Um, here's a sign from a little bit farther away with our building in the background, as you can see it. Yeah, some of the formatting here's a, there we go. Yeah, D again, just different, um, different angles and, and snapshots of the sign and how it looks. Um, so I think you came before us, it's been months, I believe. And the, uh, the time you came before us, you had lanterns on each of the piers. And so we those have been, some... sorry, I apologize. Yeah, those have been removed. Yep, yep. based on your guys' recommendations, yep. And there, there were other recommendations that were made uh, when we did have forum. I don't have those notes in front of me. I don't know, Donna or Nate, if you do, or, or if you, in fact, have those, Aaron. Those I don't. I apologize. Different. Yeah, I don't have them in front of me. I apologize. So I guess from here, I mean, are there other comments? Or, I mean, I, again, I don't know if anyone has the old recommendations we can address. Um, you know, this is, yeah, I guess, the, the sign that, that we have outside right now. And, you know, we'd love to hear more recommendations. But, I mean, I think, you know, where we're at is we'd prefer to hopefully keep this, you know, as it is. I mean, we hope that uh, you guys could see, you know, the value that it has to our to our building and, um, you know, obviously defining or setting forth the two tenants there. And I know, um, you know, included as part of that uh, dedication of preservation award, um, I think, you know, it's the building in its entirety, including, you know, the sign I, that was the hose. I, I would like to say something for the record as the yeah. staff person at the Cleveland Restoration Society that coordinates the Celebration of Preservation Awards. The award was for the restoration of the structure. There was not a conversation by the yeah, jury I, I or anything about the that. sign. <laughs> so please, I, I would like to say that the, the sign was not a part of the Celebration of Preservation Award. All right. Sure. I wasn't, I wasn't trying to imply that. I'm just making note of, you know, the fact that it's there. The building and the restoration work done at the building won an award. It was well-deserved. The sign was not okay. part of that conversation. Okay. Um, All right. So <laughs> if I recall comments. our recommendations yeah. included, I thought smaller uh, support columns. I do remember the conversation of removing the lamps. I think it's improved without the lamps um I, without seeing our previous recommendations i would have preferred to see a smaller column i think uh, these are really substantive and don't need to be that big but i do appreciate the limestone caps i think that's a better solution than what had originally been up there it's coming back to me a little bit now. I think the signboard in between the two pillars, the two pillars are um, have such weight to them, and the sign is very thin uh, relative to those, and so it feels out of scale. And then the way that it's mounted onto those piers, I think, was discussed. Um, again, I'm just going from memory. Um, and, and Aaron, you know, you you guys did a wonderful job in restoring the house, the landscaping. It all looks good there. Uh, but I don't know if you were on for the last applicant. But what we're having a difficulty with is that we keep, again, getting requests for forgiveness and not permission. And it really impedes the ability of this committee and the Landmarks Commission to do its job to ensure the integrity of the historic district. Um, and you know, if we had gotten this prior to being constructed, I think Margaret's comments are spot on. The columns, uh, if allowed, would have been smaller. Um, and, and you know, there are a number of buildings of this vintage. I'm thinking of the corner of Randall and Bridge, for instance, where Italianates are being turned into offices and we have to be very sensitive to the signage that's allowed on there because it is still in a, in a residential district in a residential area. Um, and so again, I feel somewhat at a loss here because we would have required or requested that the columns be smaller, the sign uh, lettering, uh, of a different scale. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I understand. And I wasn't part of the implementation process of the right. sign and hindsight's 2020. So I am on the same page with you. I guess that probably would have been the, 
the better direction. But, um, you know, obviously where we're at now, that wasn't the case. Margaret, what would you like to see here? Um, so my recommendation would be probably similar to what we said the last time, which um, while I, not, I appreciate the new caps without the light, had, if this were concept and not already in the ground, I would recommend um, a smaller brick pier and a smaller sign. The whole, the whole thing to me is too large. Okay, so I think our recommendation to landmarks would be to reduce the, the scale of the sign and the piers. Okay, so um, if there's no further recommendations, um, you know, this isn't a, as I said before, this is not denying this, this can still go to landmarks um, for final review. These are just recommendations because uh, we can't take a vote without quorum. So landmarks will hold your fate, which they do anyway. Yep. Okay. And we'll um, if you have any scheduled. questions, let us know. And yeah. I'm going to pull together those um, comments. They're from August 20th, last year of 2020. I wasn't in, but I know um, Ben might have them. So I'll try to find out what that motion was from last year. Okay. I, I Donna, I have that in front of me right now. I actually oh, sent cool. this over to them. It said the gas lamps seem inappropriate in this context. The signage face seems to have too little mass. Consider revising signboard with thicker material and look at smaller caps. Yeah, I, I didn't have, I don't know, Carl, did you send those over to Kyle or? I, did, I don't, yes. I don't believe. Oh, okay. I didn't get that then. Okay. All right. And we'll, we'll schedule you as soon as possible. Um, things are kind of fluid right now. Uh, but since it's already in the ground, we still have a little bit of time to play with it. So there's no huge rush, but this will give you time to take this back and do some consideration. And so we and, we come back here or that or landmarks? No, you can, you can go to landmarks. Okay. All right. Okay. Thanks, Aaron. Yeah, thank you, guys. All right. So our next applicant is uh, Gus's Chicken is um oh, what's the address on this i don't see it is it 2927 bridge no 25 20 or 25 12 church so is jp on i i am and Morning. i believe josh humphreys is as well so i am here as well okay um obviously appreciate the opportunity to come back uh so quickly um, and the flexibility and, and the comments that were offered the last go around. So um, we kind of pulled this together basically as kind of what we had presented before in case there were questions and then added back in uh, some additional information that we thought would help the board um, address some of the deficiencies of the last presentation. So again, just for orientation, that's the, the location off of church uh, with West 25th just off to the east. <clears throat> if you want to keep scrolling down, it's going to seem very familiar. Um, that's the kind of present state of the building, uh, the Morgan. And again, keep scrolling. That was the historic context photograph that uh, Carl and Don Pettit had uh, found. Uh, that was kind of the reference for um, you know, just kind of the what used to be, or at least back in, I remember what the date was on that. Is that 61? Mm -hmm. Okay, so back, uh, wow, almost to the day, 12-5, okay. Um, anyway, so lo, lo these many years later, um, we're obviously uh, thinking this would be an ideal spot to put uh, Gus's chicken in, so if you just want to go uh, scroll through the, the photos again, this is one that we did add. There was a conversation last time about the painting of the coins. Um, and I, I did pass back uh, to uh, uh, the, con the conversation that I had with uh, Dan, uh, who confirmed that the, his recommendation at the time was to go to a darker stone that he had thought that the standard um, 
painted condition that that normally is recommended as kind of like a sandstone equivalent uh, would look potentially out of place in this. And uh, we had made a proposal for a color, which I'll get to in a minute. Um, and he had confirmed that he thought that was just fine in terms of accepting of his recommendation of going to something darker, but certainly not as dark, you know, quote, black, uh, which was seemed to be the milieu of what was uh, what was proposed the last go around. So, uh, so if you want to keep scrolling down, <clears throat> again, just some existing context photos, the building next door, across the street, the mural kind of on the north north facing side or, or facing north. And then this was our last submittal drawing. And then we've added then <clears throat> the next page, which basically just tried to um, provide additional information as requested. Um, so we did include some details. It, it was intended to simply be a, a, a storefront system that was infilled into, uh, into that the, the two openings that were reopening essentially or bringing back to more along the lines of their original sizing. Um, we are including a detail then for the RLM fixture that was intended to go above uh, the existing man door and then to kind of line up uh, above our proposed entryway, I'm sorry, the, the new storefront system and entry door, uh, which again, the yellow is kind of part of the branding for Gus's chicken. Um, the windows above, as mentioned before, will be uh, will remain as existing. Uh, they're, they're, they're in actually good shape. And then um, per the uh, conversation last time, uh, we would propose to do a non-illuminated with both faces for the Gus's uh, chicken sign, but then we'd add um, some LED lighting uh, so they could be externally lit and they would be then symmetrical on both, uh, both faces of that sign. And then the, um, the color uh, that was referenced in there uh, so I thought it was dark taupe. Virtual taupe, virtual taupe um, was submitted uh, back to storefront and uh, Dan had said that that was perfectly fine as a, a, a browner color, which would, in our opinion, be better in, in concert with some of the bronze uh, coloring that we're going to do for the storefront framing. So, um, and Thank to... You. Can you? I'm so I had missed your presentation last week, and so I apologize. I'm sure you already went over this, but are they already painted? Uh, are are which part already painted? The the stone is that already? Yes, painted? it is. It is presently painted. So the point, and and all of the brick is presently painted. Okay. Luckily, the brick itself, for kind of the brick color, is is holding up very very well. But as a, as a way of kind of revisiting this and changing some of the the tenor of it. The recommendation was that we do repaint the coins uh, at least, and in this suggested color virtual taupe was was deemed appropriate. So, thank you. So, uh, and, and just because I'm, I'm trying to listen, um, we would make a point of saying that any sign that is affixed to the building would have a mounting condition that would respect the mortar joints. We're not going to try to tap con into brick. So, um, so that. That will just be brokered with the sign company, but we're, we we are aware of that, and that would be our intent. So, thanks. And a four foot high sign at that location, I think, is more appropriate than the five and a half foot sign that we saw at the last presentation. With with apologies to them, because uh, the the one in Lakewood is just around the corner from uh, from my house, and they do make a, a very mean gyro. So, um, <laughs> I, <laughs> aesthetic aside, the 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 gyro is great. Yeah. So. All right. <laughs> James, I think you really did a great job of responding to our requests here. It, um, it's helpful to see everything on this new elevation. And I, I like, I think the taupe color is more historically appropriate. Um, and I, the light fixture, I don't have a problem with. I, the yellow is kind of fun. <laughs> Um, it's, a it's, it's a little pop. Uh, some, it's some a little of the pop, other, yeah. Some of the other locations have awnings and other things. Um, and this just feels like this is kind of like a, a little ring of pearls around kind of the black dress kind of thing. It, it, it's, it's enough to give a nod to it uh, without being overbearing. And it just keeps kind of the context of the historical in place. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And the, the design of the gooseneck um, goes with the era of the building. So. Um, I, I feel like I can support this. I, I don't have further comment. I don't know, Alex. Um, 
No, I think I understand that you've addressed the concerns of last time, though I was not part of that, and, and that satisfies me. Um, I don't think I have anything further. AP, I just have a quick question. Is there an actual step up there, there in there the front? At, at present, there's, uh, in fact, one of those, uh, if it's worth scrolling back, there's about a seven, seven and change step up to the existing condition from the sidewalk. Yeah, one of those earlier uh, photographs of the front would show it. So it's just the, the floor elevation is that high to start with. Okay. Are you retaining that stone step there or we're, is that going to come out? No, I, I think we're going to have to do a little bit of utility work uh, to, to reset a gas line. So there may be a chance that we could kind of warp a little bit of the concrete replacement to make sure that we're within code to get that step to come up. So so we'll we'll probably try to get rid of that that step itself. Because okay. that, that's really almost a trip hazard right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe you're widening the step to be door width as well. So if you need to put something in there for code. Well, that's that's actually another thought. I hadn't hadn't, hadn't entertained that, but maybe, maybe that is the compromise, so. Okay, thank you. It's nice okay. to see the openings return to match the existing lentils and, and brickwork too. It was just thinking the same thing, I agree. Are there any further comments from the committee? No, I think we can move on to the next agenda item. Okay, great. All right. Thank you, James. Thank you. Thanks everyone. All right, so, um, oops. Last on our agenda for today. Oh boy, it's, there we go. Um, last on the agenda today is Hex Cafe 2927 Bridge. Um, I believe Tina is here for this or? Yes, hello. Here. Hello. How are you? Good, thank you. Um, do you, you can start whenever you're ready. Okay, here we have um, Hex Cafe 2927 Bridge Avenue. We had some damages done to our front entrance during the riots in 2020. And at that time, this is the original front entrance. A couple different angles here. And then at that time, the Center window and the adjoining side windows were busted out and broken, and we had um, boarded them up and covered them up to get, you know, through to some sort of repair. And then we had went with Euclid glass, Oops. and we had only been given, you know, a very small option of to repair. And this is what ended up being chosen to repair the front entrance, as close as we could get it to match the original and what was available to us at that time. Okay, so what was damaged in the riots was the glass was busted out, correct? All right. <laughs> Sorry, is that right? Is that accurate? Could you repeat, please? Yes. You showed images of damage done by vandalism, and it looks like the damage uh, was broken glass. Is that accurate? Broken glass, and the door itself was kicked in, so you can't see it in here, but we had to- yeah. So the door was damaged. And just put it back together. I'm sorry? Yeah, it was damaged. The door was damaged, okay. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you were on, uh, some of the prior presentations here about uh, applicants coming before the design review committee asking for forgiveness and not permission. Um, this is something that, by the way, I'm, I'm sorry that the glass was broken, that the door was kicked in. Uh, that's very unfortunate, um, but it was repairable. Um, it was repairable in a way that would have been more historically accurate and in line with the building. Um, you know, this, what, what's installed there is, is in no way um, appropriate to have um, uh, uh, dividers in the glass like that to have taken out the, the woodwork um, and replaced it with that storefront system. Um, I, I can't 
support that. I think it needs to go back and and the, the, the dividers right there, those white dividers in the glass, uh, I mean, that's just, that's just wrong on every level. There's nothing that's right about that. And my, my fallback position, if you had to keep that storefront, is you have to replace those windows and remove that uh, faux divided light in between the panes and actually add real divided lights or simulated divided lights, muttons on the exterior, um, or redesign it. But what's there now is in no way appropriate. Margaret, I don't know if you have more to add. I don't. I, I agree with what you said, Alex. I would even entertain just plain glass in the space without any divides um, over the, what is here now. I, I question. So this, it, I for some reason thought that this was a breezeway because it almost looks temporary, but it's right. not, correct? Yeah, yeah, and the door is not appropriate either. I mean, that's, there are other more appropriate doors for that. I mean, that, that is a beautiful building. It's a wonderful building. It's a prominent building in that corner. Um, it's got that great cornice work there. It's a corner entrance and that, that storefront, that, that door system there with the, the, the side lights is, that needs to be fixed. I mean, what are you referring to, to the original? Do you have the original? I mean, it's probably somewhere at the, here, here's the original. Yeah, because so so, that, that, that's right. I mean, you, you see you the, could... the width of the wood trim around that light, for example. We're now missing all of that detail. You're missing the wood trims. And, and because the door and then the, there was a divide in the transom, a divided light in the transom. So Not to mention the divided lights in the door, but. When we were presented by a, a solution back then, which I don't think we had many options. I mean, that was the fastest, the quickest thing that they could get. And even that took a long time and we were Literally, with um, the so worst looking, it wasn't secure. It was not a lot of options to go with. And we tried to get as close as possible with what they had. Well, this, the original door was a residential style door. Yeah, yeah, that door is not historic. I'm not worried. I'm not worried about that door. I'm worried about the storefront system. The, I'm worried about the side lights, the wood detailing, the transom. That, that's what I'm concerned about. And um, and that, that need, either needs to be brought back or changed, but I would not recommend to Landmarks approving what's there now. Um, I, I'd be happy to work with you and, and grant you some, you know, some time to make the change, but there, a change does need to be made. Well, this is unfortunate response as well. I mean, we are, I understand where you're coming from. Um, I think there's gotta be some consideration into this is a commercial building. I am not sure that we're able to even, back then we weren't able to, to match it at all. I mean, we went through so many options. We- No, it, it, it can be matched, it can be done for certain. And, and you know, and, and I'm willing, and I'm willing to, to allow you know some lead time to work on this, I'm not saying this has to be done overnight, uh, but it does it does need to be changed, and it, and it can be done. There are plenty of skilled. Uh, are we going to get some kind of an assistant paying for this again? Because we we paid a lot of money for that, and I'm not sure it's the right timing to um, redo all this. I I again I understand where you're coming from, but I think there's a, other factors in there as well. It's not just. Um, no. I understand. I, I look. I'm, I'm sympathetic. I'm not trying to, to beat you up here over this, but our recommendation to landmarks is going to be really um, specific and strong and forceful that that it needs to be uh, restored to an appropriately uh, historically appropriate entranceway system. And what's there now is not it. And, and you know, you can take a couple months to to figure it out, design for it but you own a, his, a historically significant building and it must be treated that way. 
Um, you know, and it can be done. It's not going it, to, it'll cost something, but it's not going to cost an arm or a leg, but it can be done right. There are plenty of carpenters in this it's town not, who know it's how to do it. cost something. It's going to cost a lot. It's not something. I mean, we paid close to $10,000 for, to replace this and not even, not considering the headache, the supply chain, the, no, you, I mean, the, the time that we waited for this and uh, listen, I understand. I'm not, I'm not, uh, that's why I'm willing to give you some time here, but you've got to come back to us with a plan that meets the Secretary of Interior standards for this building and for this location. So we're willing to work with you. I'm, you know, I'm not going to slam you, but you do have to come back with renderings with a plan to fix the situation. Okay, what is, I, I need a specific recommendation so we know what we're talking about. Yep, okay. I, I, Go ahead, Margaret. We could suggest, um, the uh, transom with what appeared to have been three divided lights and wood trim side. By the lights. way, just not, not to interrupt you, but I mean, you're referring to this picture showing right now and that picture, um, that door was damaged again a few years ago. I don't know, probably seven, eight years. And it was replaced. It wasn't even like that. It was replaced again with what we could replace it with. Not the door, the lights it themselves and the sides. So I don't know if you have any original pictures. So I'm not sure why we're referring to this picture as an original. Okay. That, that, that's fine, that's fine. But we can, we, we know with, um, without too much speculation, what the, what an appropriate entrance way there would look like. And so whether it's working with the storefront renovation program or working with an architect, um, it can be put back to have side lights and a transom and an appropriate door. Um, and again, we're willing to give you the time to do that, um, but you may need to so see- the time, the time is gonna depend on the recommendations. So I would, I would need to see what the recommendations are and then we'll see what the time, because it's My hard for any of us to put a timeline in anything to right now. Connect with the storefront renovation program or historic preservation architect in the area and come back. I'm sorry? So My our recommendation is to go to the city of Cleveland offers a storefront renovation program. And there's, there may be assistance available to you through that program. Uh, I, I would start there. Um, and then if necessary, go to an architect. There are plenty in this neighborhood, but you can choose whoever you like um, that would be able to provide you with renderings, drawings for a historically appropriate entrance way for that location. I understand this is the process, but I just wanna, I wanna know what the, your recommendations, I mean, what are we looking at now? What are you looking for to go back to what? Okay, what, what we're gonna look for is we're gonna look for uh, probably a wood uh, entrance system with side lights and a transom and an appropriate door. Um, and I, I, I will you know, give you more, you can play around with that, but but it needs to probably have those elements at least. And the lights should be true divided lights. True divided lights. Yep. Um, so which lights are we talking? About? Can we go back to that picture? Yeah. Any so, any lights, any divide. So you currently have vinyl here, sir. Okay. So this is and, the original. Yeah. What are we What are we looking to change in here? Well, all, all of that has to come out. Not nothing about that is right. All of that has to come out. Yes. Okay. And then go back to what? Again, so I understand correctly. And sir, this isn't um, this isn't a final say here. This is a recommendation to the Landmarks Commission. Ultimately, it is up to the Landmarks Commission and that's who is going to have to give you the actual um, rules and regulations that you'll have to follow but usually they take the comments that are given here today very seriously because this is an, an um, this is a, th this committee informs the Landmarks Commission. I understand, so, I, I just wanna, you know, since we are on, uh, on, you know, in the meeting right now, I just wanna see what you're seeing exactly. So take those dividers out or this whole thing needs to come out and put what, what, back, back. Okay. I, I think, you know, go see the storefront renovation program. What, what we're going to look for, look, Margaret and I are telling you, is that you see there you have side lights, which are the window panes on either side of the door. You see those? Yes. 
Okay, so you're gonna need those. And often they're divided into threes, not always, sometimes they're two, but often three. And they have actual external um, muttons or mullions, depending on transom or, or divided light. They have divided lights. And in the transom, it'll be divided up uh, often into an odd number, maybe three, whatever, uh, up there. And uh, the material would probably be wood. You could have a carpenter do that. Um, but the storefront renovation program is gonna give you more options than Margaret and I are going to on this call today uh, to satisfy the, the Secretary of Interior standards here. All right, so we'll just get some guidance, you know, see where we start with this. Yes, and I would recommend that we put you back on the agenda if it's okay with you in two meetings time, just so we don't lose track of this and you can update us on your progress then. All right. Which okay. agenda is that? Uh, definitely That's not this, this month. Agenda. No, I be, would recommend uh, sometime in January. Yeah, the second January meeting. Yep. And we'll we'll reach out to you um, and let you know when that meeting is going to take place, and we'll ask you if you're ready to do. You we'll, know, represent. We're we're, we're going to need some time because there, you know this is a holiday time, and I understand. I, yeah, we're, again, we're willing to work with you. Um, we'll give you the time, but just come back in in two months or two meeting times sometime in January and just let us know what progress you've made. Uh, even if it's not much, let us know and just so we can keep the process moving. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, if there's no further comments from the committee, um, that's our last item for today, so. Great. So next time we meet, hopefully we will have some of our new committee members present. Um, and then, Can I stop recording now? Um, yes. Okay, great. Were there calendar invites sent?